Back on the morning drive, 105.9 WBGA. I'm joined in studio by Mr. John Quarterman. John, how you doing? Pretty good, Steve. People good. From hey, Howard, got to stick together. That's exactly right. We got to stick together. He's, John is with the Swanee River Keepers. You can look on Facebook and see the sign right there. Appreciate you coming in this morning and uh, talking about something that we all can get uh, rally around, and that's keeping our uh, rivers and our waterways clean and beautiful, keep, trying to keep the pollution out of them. Because I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, like we said before we came in there. You don't want to drink dirty water. That's right. Who wants to, who wants to fish in it or swim in it? Who wants to eat fish out of it or swim in it? That's exactly right. So, That's uh, right. Tell us what's going on. I know that the uh, Troopville boat ramp uh, was uh, was part of your uh, uh, activities here. Well, that's right. Just Saturday, mm-hmm. if if you look on our website, walls.net, net, you'll mm-hmm. find a post about the Troopville cleanup. Yeah, like you had a crowd show up. Yeah, I had 50 people. Wow, that's good. People. It was Saturday good, yeah. morning, and we had special permission from the owners. Um, now, we met at the boat ramp, which is on right. the park site. Right. But south of that, down at the confluence of the Little River and the Withacoochee, that's privately owned. That's right. And one of the uh, owners, it's uh, an LLC with a bunch of family members, mm-hmm. Helen Tapp, mm-hmm. T-A-P-P. Hi, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> she organized getting us permission to go in there. And um, I wasn't there because we had four different things going on in three counties in two states that same day. We were talking about that. That's a lot of activity. <laughs> Can't be in all them places at once. So. Remind me not to schedule it like that again. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Spread them out. Yeah. So um, Bobby McKenzie, Bobby McKenzie, who's one of our members, he's, mm-hmm. he's actually stationed at Moody. Yep. He organized this, and he brought some people from Moody. And um, KLVB, Keep Lounge of Aldosta Beautiful, Eric mm-hmm. Strickler is the right. director. They sent uh, two Boy Scout troops and a Girl Scout troop. Wow. But they had a good time. Yep. So we had everybody from children to adults out there picking up stuff. They found everything from, um, he says on here, somebody somewhere, how many tires and such, um, which naturally right now I can't find. (laughs) Uh, Oh, here we go. Five tires, 35 of 30-gallon trash bags, a bumper from a Pontiac Bonneville. (laughs) And a life size motor life size motorcycle sign plus a boat. A and boat. A boat, as in um, it looked to be about uh, sixteen feet long. Really? Yeah. I guess it just got abandoned, or uh, yeah, the, clearly water got high and got left over there or something. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, KL, uh, KLVB called Parks and Rec to come take out the trash. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. We actually also have an agreement with Lowndes County Public Works. Yeah. We've done a lot of cleanups at landings, and in Lowndes County, they'll come get the bags if we collect them. We like that. Well, that's the least they could do for y'all doing this uh, pro, uh, free of charge, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, thanks to Bobby McKenzie and Helen Tapp and KLVB and VLPRA and Lowndes County and, uh, you know, there's this is a long list. Mm-hmm. That he used while he was down there these signs that we had planted the previous day uh, um, at the boat ramp. Right. Gotcha. These, it's two metal signs mm-hmm. each side of the sheet. You can see each mm-hmm. side. And if you look at that post there on walls.net, you'll see what I'm holding up. And these, um, what he particularly referred to is the one that has safety on it, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's a big thing. You'll notice right. it also has etiquette, with little yeah. things like respect waterfront property, don't trespass on private property, yeah. minimize impacts to the shore. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's half of the point. We want to get people using the rivers that actually like the rivers, and we'll yeah. take care of them. That's right. It's all about respect, John. That's you, know, right. you would think that we wouldn't have to even get on here and talk about that, but we do. You think? Uh, obviously, because the people that that left the trash you described a while ago, they have no respect for the environment. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. They think somebody will come along and clean it up, and okay, in this case, they're right, but that's not really the way it ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the way it ought to be. You're right. Mm-hmm. But so, thank God for you guys. Phil Hubbard. Uh, printed mm-hmm. these metal signs and planted mm-hmm. them. They were designed by a committee, a rare example of a committee camel that came out pretty good. Yeah, that's right. It did good. That's good, good uh, brochure for sure. All right. And there is a, there is a brochure <laughs> for the water trail, the Withacoochee and Little mm-hmm. River Water Trail. We're almost that, finished with it. That's a, that's a nifty little thing you got right here. And, uh, where can people uh, get this brochure at, huh? Well, they can actually print it right off the website, okay. or if they call us, we'll send them some. That's right. Now, this tells you how many miles uh, it is from one destination to the next, which is uh, 
uh, you know, if you're kayaking or canoeing down the river, it's mm-hmm. helpful to know how far you got to paddle, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, and we yeah. actually had one on there. I won't say which one, which was uh, ten miles off. Oh my goodness! And uh, you know, people don't really like that. We're almost <laughs> there. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> ten miles. I'd have been, been looking you up after that. <laughs> But these, these miles on here now, we went to a lot of trouble. We mm-hmm. had Professor John Dennisman at VSU and Phil Hubbard, our outings chair, both worked up miles on this, and we took the average, and we're pretty sure these are pretty co- pretty close to correct. Good deal, good deal. Now, upriver on the Little River, coming up this weekend, this mm-hmm. Saturday, is the sixth annual Big Little River Paddle, Paddle Race. race. Yeah, that, that goes on every year. I remember you coming in and talking about it mm-hmm. last year. So. Mm-hmm. Last year we had 50 people participating. Mm-hmm. The year before it was 34, so it's been getting bigger. We'll see what it does this year. Yeah. Uh, that same Bobby McKenzie, he's rustling up people from Moody to come compete. Mm-hmm. So our perpetual winner, Dwight Griner, I love Dwight, but you know, after five years, people keep thinking we're going to beat him this year. Somebody needs to put a, attach an anchor to his uh, yeah. boat or kayak there, slow but, him down a little bit. They'd probably have to because uh, you put him in a boat and he goes, and uh, you know, those people from Moody, unless they've been training in kayaks, they're going to have trouble catching him. Yeah, they are. Um, let, shoot, shoot me an email after this week. And let me know how many sh- uh, turned up, mm-hmm. how the event went, and I'll make make sure I announce that on there. Now, I just, I'm just i not trying to get ahead of you, but I flipped this over, and I see that y'all are having a Swanee Riverkeeper songwriting contest. We are, and it's in Cedar Key on June 23rd. Mm-hmm. You may wonder, why am I talking about Valdosta? Trivia question. I did not know this till six years ago. What is the biggest city in the entire Swanee River Basin? Is it Valdosta? It is. How about that? I That's didn't right. know that neither. I was a guess because... We're sitting about us, and you ask the question. That's so right. Educated guests. I didn't know that. That's, That's cool. particularly embarrassing to me, even though I, I've always lived near Hayhira. I was actually yeah. born in Little Griffin Hospital in Van Austin. Yeah, so, really? yeah, so we expect a lot of submissions. Submissions are now open. Go right on the website, walls.net, www.ls.net, and you'll see it. A lot of songwriters living in the listening area, so I know that you guys will be interested in that so go to the uh swanee riverkeeper site and you'll see more information on that Mm -hmm. and there's a committee for that the contest committee will pick seven finalists and then judges at the event june 23rd in cedar key will pick some winners 300 dollars prize for the Mm -hmm. first place and 50 dollars each to someone who submitted from outside the basin and someone who submitted from inside and also prizes for each musical genre that's that's submitted Mm -hmm. good deal good deal that's that i like that in between, we have, right here in Valdosta, on um, May 31st at Mathis Auditorium, the Wild and Scenic Film, Film Festival, which is short films about rivers and oceans mm-hmm. and land preservation. Gotcha. We're also going to have, um, actually, both at... Um, at the Paddle Race and at the Film Festival, we're going to have a silent auction, and we're raffling off a kayak. No, hey, that's a good deal. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, Mathis City Auditorium, that's a hidden gem in the community. That's a great venue, great auditorium. The sound quality is good. Lighting is good. So that'll be a nice event right there, and that's going on again Thursday, May the 31st at 7 p.m. So y'all mark that down mm-hmm. on your calendar. That's right. And John, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a really quick break again. right here. And when we come back, we'll uh, we'll uh, get some more information out there. It looks All like right. we've got a couple more things to talk about. Uh, always. All right, 105.9 WVG. I'll be right back. The location, Valdosta, Georgia. It's a fine place to enjoy life until somebody breaks the law. That's where I come in. I carry a badge. We were working the beat around Langdale Kia. Langdale Kia of Valdosta, they know it's a crime. It's a crime to pay more than a dime. One dime total out of pocket. The rest of Georgia needs some guidance. We went undercover. Hey, hey, come on in, sir. How much do we need to put down on this car? 1500 down should do it. I was afraid of that. Book them. Hey, what gives? You're under arrest. It's a crime to pay more than a dime. One dime down. But that's it, Langdale, Kia, Valdosta. They even got that uh, credit approvathon. Correct. If you bring home four twenty five a week, you get up to thirty thousand dollars in credit. Thirty grand? That's right, Mac. With only one dime down. At Langdale Kia. Langdale Kia of Valdosta. On North Ashley Street. LangdaleKia.com. That's LangdaleKia.com. To qualified buyers, see dealer for details. Howdy, folks. It's me, Colonel Sanders. My KFC $20 fill-up includes a whole bucket of delicious Kentucky Fried Chicken, two sides of mashed potatoes and gravy, coleslaw, and four flaky biscuits for just $20. 
It'll feed four people. And it uh, comes with a free bucket. And every time you use that bucket, you'll be reminded of how delicious that meal was. Now that's value. KFC, it's finger-licking good. And participating KFCs for a limited time. Prices may vary. Tax extra. Extra charge for breast piece and side item substitution may apply. Offer includes eight-piece chicken, three large sides, four biscuits. You can't print invoices without ink. You can't print status reports, spreadsheets, or that report due in 12 minutes without ink. No, you can't print anything without ink. Luckily, Staples has a huge selection of ink and toner in stock and at great prices every day. This week only, buy one HP ink at Staples and get a second 30% off. So stock up now because you can't afford to run out of ink. Ends 4 14 18. See store associate or staples.com for details. Restrictions may apply. Bush Wealth Management works to empower their clients to live comfortably by planning wisely. Listen in every Tuesday morning for their latest thoughts and comments or check out their podcast at bushwealth.com. Hi, this is Stacy Bush with Bush Wealth Management. With the stock market hitting new all-time highs, it seems like almost every day, a lot of people are leery about investing in times like this. That's why we look to use a strategy called dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is investing the same amount of money on a regular basis over a certain time horizon. By doing this, your money will automatically buy more shares when the share price of an investment is low and fewer shares when an investment is high. Therefore, generally decreasing your average share price over a period of time. To learn more strategies like this, please give us a call today, 229-247-1474, or check us out at bushwealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Woodstack Barbecue Tavern, right out the spot for authentic southern barbecue. Slow smoked ribs, pulled pork, brisket, chicken, sausage, and wings all await you. Woodstack Barbecue Tavern smokes everything using only local oak wood. Come in and taste true slow smoked wood flavor. Start your barbecue experience with fresh fried pork rinds or a plate of the St. Louis Barbecue Classic Burn Ins. Homemade desserts round out your incredible barbecue experience. Open seven days a week, located on North Valdosta Road in the old Shorty's Building. Woodstack Barbecue Tavern. Take pride in your barbecue. You're listening to South Georgia's number one local talk show, The Morning Drive with Steve Nichols on Valdosta's information leader, News Talk 105.9 WVGA. Back on The Morning Drive, 105.9 WVGA, continuing my conversation with John Quarterman, who is with Swanee River Keepers and Walls Watershed Coalition, and you might want to kind of uh, comment on those two mm-hmm. entities and tell us the the, sure. uh, the, uh, the the relationship between the two. All righty. I'm also the president of Walls Watershed Coalition, mm-hmm. and what's that? Well, uh, six years ago, a bunch of us, it turns out, in, starting independently in Lowndes County and Tift County, mm-hmm. we're noticing there's all sorts of problems around here. You know, the wastewater plant was overflowing, bridges were closed, some of them when they shouldn't have been because of deadfalls, mm-hmm. and all sorts of other problems. And we looked around and said, where is the river keeper? There was none. Wow. And then mm-hmm. we... We asked a foolish question. Where are the population centers in the Swanee River Basin? Yeah. The biggest, most populated cities in the Swanee River Basin are Valdosta and Tifton. Tifton, yeah. Followed by Moultrie. Lake City's number four. Wow. So yeah, we got together, the people mostly from Lowndes County and Tift County, and formed the initial board incorporated in June 2012, Walls Watershed Coalition. Why, why the two W's? What's that about? With the Coochie, Will the Coochie, Alapaha, Little, and Sewanee River Systems. How about that? Good deal. Mm-hmm. Practice good it. Deal. You can say it in one breath. <laughs> It'll take some practice mm-hmm. there. But, you know, people, you, you, water and rivers, they flow from one direction to the other. And it's important that if you're sitting here in Hay Hira, Georgia, like you and I do, mm-hmm. we need to know what's going on in the river up in Tifton. That's right. So that's why you form a coalition mm-hmm. so that you can keep monitoring that and, and, uh, and well, do well, the things you need to do. Well, for example, during Hurricane Irma, everybody in Florida thought, well, of course, Valdosta must have spilled. Well, actually, Valdosta had one tiny spill of 900 gallons at a lift station on Cherry Creek that mm-hmm. almost certainly never got to the river. Right. The biggest spill was from Tifton. Mm, really? On a creek upstream from Reed Bingham State Park. Wow. And nobody knows whether it got to Reed Bingham because there's no regular water quality monitoring. 
mm. which is something that we're trying to start a water quality monitoring program. Yeah. One of the four things in three counties and two states Saturday was mm. Saturday morning on the Suwannee River at the Music Park. We had, uh, thank you, Ryan Nemo from SGRC come down and conduct some water quality wall, uh, <laughs> testing, testing training. Yeah. Yeah. So we now got a crew of four people starting some regular testing, and we're going to expand that. Anybody who wants to volunteer, please get in touch. Mm -hmm. We're doing that in Florida, too. It's, um, you know, speaking of the river's flow, whenever I'm in Florida, they eventually ask, where are you from? <laughs> That's right. And then they go, oh, you're from Georgia. In Georgia, huh? And I said, you know, the rivers have not learned to read. They do not no, know they someone. Flow right through there. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, what about all those seven counties in Florida that passed resolutions asking the state to step in to stop Valdosta spills? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's because, okay, well, it turns out, thank you, Valdosta, has mostly stopped that. Mm. They've spent upwards of $200 million, much of which you, the taxpayers, funded largely through uh, uh, Splost. Yeah. And uh, they built a whole new Withlacoochee water, wastewater treatment plant uphill out of a floodplain. Right. They built a big force main, which is uh, near the Y at Gornto, and a bunch of other stuff, so that it's now been uh, more than a year since they had a major spill. That's good. That's progress. We hope it stays that way. Amen to that. Amen to that. Okay. Yep. Now, I, I know you got some other things to, to mm -hmm. go over, but I want to ask you one quick question. And, uh, as a whole... Mm -hmm. Right here in Lowndes County, when the water in the Withlacoochee is tested and the water in the Little River is tested, mm -hmm. does it grad out okay? A lot of room for improvement. What do you see in there? There are problems with the water in the Withlacoochee River. It's interestingly not mostly below the wastewater treatment plant. Really? Where we're currently seeing the biggest problems is mm, where Sugar Creek comes into the okay. Withlacoochee gotcha. down at the Y. Oh. And we're looking into why is that? Yeah. Don't know yet. So Don't know yet, but yet. you're studying it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. you. That's interesting. Keep us informed on that. We want to mm -hmm. we want to know what's going on there. You got any information that we got about seven uh, about five minutes now, so talk sure. fast. Um Okay. <laughs> Just to finish the previous thing, uh yeah. Swanee Riverkeeper. The Riverkeeper name is trademarked mm -hmm. by Waterkeeper Alliance, which okay. has more than three hundred members worldwide. Okay. So, in the end of 2016, we asked them, can we be Swanee Riverkeeper? And they said, as long as you do these things, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, sure you can do that. I gotcha. And one of those things is you have to have a full-time, fully funded staff member who is the Riverkeeper. That's currently me. I can <laughs> attest to the full-time part. Yeah, I guarantee you. <laughs> but the fully funded, we're trying something that's never been done as much as possible to be funded from memberships. Because mm -hmm. that means we're not beholden to, if we take money from, we'll say, Nestle, then there might be certain subjects they might right. say, you can't talk about that. That's right. That's and we'd, right. we'd rather not. Stay independent. You're better off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got this newsletter here that if you're a member, you get. Mm -hmm. um, we don't post these on the website till later. Right. But it's all about what we've been up to. It ranges from things about, do you know about uh, Treats Rain Lily? Mm -mm. Those not little familiar. lilies you see growing in the ditches around this time? Yeah. They actually only grow close to the Georgia-Florida line. Really? They're a special variant of something that does grow much more widely, but this particular one only grows right around here. Is that the one with the white, the white lily flower? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's it right there. Yep. How about white lily flower. Um, it's got pointy petals. In fact, that's one of the distinguishing features. The end of the petals are pointy. Mm -hmm. It has you know six petals and it has yellow. Um, Stamens, I guess. I, mm -hmm. I was an embarrassment to my botanist. <laughs> well, I don't know what I was if you were an embarrassment. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, the newsletter uh, lists all sorts. We are an advocacy organization. We had this discussion at length when we were forming up. If we just, you know, like do outings, there's lots of groups that do that. We do advocacy, mm -hmm. which includes phosphate mines. Most of you may not be aware there's a phosphate mine in Hamilton County. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just did their five-year permitting, and uh, we and some other people, Chris Miracle in particular, who lives in Hamilton County, got some changes so we can at least see what they're up to. Yeah. And there's another phosphate mine, but, you know, that's in Florida, so uh, let's talk more about stuff here. Outings. We do at least one outing a month. Mm. Paddle outing. The one yeah. for this month is the Big Little River Paddle Race coming up this Saturday at gotcha. 8 a.m. at Reed yes. Bingham State Park. Yeah. You can see I've been to the School of Advertising. There, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And the next uh, regularly scheduled paddle race is um, the um, White Springs to Woods Ferry on the Suwannee River on May 12th at 9 okay. a.m. All right. And the way this works is, uh, well, you know, the, the big little the paddle race is 30 bucks. But the others, it's 10 bucks if you're not a member or you get in free if you're a member. Mm, okay. Okay. And we're doing, in June, our first ever two-day kayak camping event from Suwannee Springs to Suwannee River State Park. Oh, that's cool right Park. there. You get mm-hmm. overnight, a little mm-hmm. overnight flare there. I mm-hmm. love that. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's a shuttle charge on that one. Mm-hmm. But that should be fun. I'll actually be in Buffalo, New York at the annual um, um, Waterkeeper Alliance Conference. But, you know, that's part of the way this works is no one can do this, you know, as an individual. It's no. got to be a group. Too big. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's too big. Too vast. Yep. So we've got members. We want more members, and we got a committee for everything. You want to join up and <laughs> be on a committee? we got one for you. All right. Well, tell us how you would join up and be a part of the uh, Swanee River Keepers. Well, the easiest way, if you're following along online, is just go to walls.net, www.als.net. If that's hard to remember, swanneeriverkeeper.org. Okay. It goes to the same place. It goes to the same place. Yeah. And right there over on the right side, or if you're on the phone, um, look in the menu under Become Involved. Mm-hmm. And you can also help with all sorts of things. We're project raising for uh, water trail signs on the other water trail, the Alapaha River Water Trail. Mm -hmm. You will see signs showing up on the road shortly by the state. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the Naylor Naylor boat ramp that Lowndes County is building Mm -hmm. is finished, Mm -hmm. Lowndes County is going to plant the road signs. Oh, Oh, and i got to thank Robin Cumbus of of, uh, Public Works at Lowndes County. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, Joe Pritchard, the county manager, for agreeing that in Lowndes County, all the signs on all the landings on the water trails will be made by Lowndes County. Good deal. Good and, deal. and then on the Withacoochee and Little River Water Trail, that's more than half of all of them. There you go. Well, John, I appreciate you coming in. I know there's a lot going on with Swanee River Keepers. We appreciate the hard work you do and the dedication you provide to keeping our waterways safe, secure, and uh, clean. And uh, that's something we can all get around. But, uh, again, I appreciate you coming in. And don't forget to shoot me an email of uh, how many people showed up, who won the race, and I'll announce that Monday morning when I come in. Will do, and thanks right. for having me on. Yes, sir. Uh, John Quarterman, Swanee River Keepers. Y'all check it out. For more information, you can shoot me an email, snichols at blackcrow.fm, and I will get the proper information to you, and I will see you tomorrow in 21 hours, 105.9 WVGA. Case almost closed. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. Bill Cosby's retrial is coming to an end in Pennsylvania, where a second jury will try to do what the first could not, reach a verdict. Fox's Grinnell Scott is live outside the court in Norristown. Dave, after 11 days of testimony and around 25 witnesses for both sides, Bill Cosby, just about 15 minutes ago, arrived at the Montgomery County Courthouse, wife Camille at his side, to hear, along with the jury, closing arguments. Now, hard to judge the demeanor of Cosby. Cosby tries to keep a stoic face, but if he is convicted of the three aggravated and decent assault charges against him, it could amount to a life sentence for him. Now, the uh, jury is expected to hear the closing arguments take up most of the morning before they get the case uh, in the afternoon uh, to see if they can come to a verdict, Dave. You're in all next hour, the driver who plowed a van onto a Toronto side while killing 10 people, injuring 15, goes to courts. It, it's very clear, uh, just from a general perspective, to say that uh, the actions uh, definitely look deliberate. Well, that's Police Chief Mark Saunders. They still don't know why he did it and investigating any possible terror ties. Travis Ryan King facing four murder charges in Nashville the day after he was captured not far from the Waffle House where James Shaw Jr. stopped the shooting. I just needed to uh, disarm him and get the gun away.